Hello. In the previous video, we covered connecting system platform to SQL database using the SQL data object. The link for the video is in the description box. In today's video, we will utilize SQL data grid to connect to SQL server from system platform. The SQL data grid is a symbol that enables you to interact with data stored in SQL databases. Traditionally, the SQL data grid symbol, which is delivered as an industrial graphic, is used in an in-touch application that you create in a published or managed mode. However, in this video, we will be embedding the SQL data grid as an orchestra application in OMI. If you are not familiar with OMI, it is the Operation Management Interface, and it's another visualization client for system platform similar to InTouch. We will first import the SQL Data Grid control as an application into our Galaxy, then go over the minimum configuration required by the SQL Data Grid app to retrieve data from a SQL database, and the set of custom properties that must be configured to authenticate users and connect to the database. So first, let's look for the SQL data grid symbol. And to do that, in System Platform IDE, go to the Graphic Toolbox and expand the Default Content folder, then expand the Apps folder. You will see two subfolders including the Net Controls and OMI apps. The OMI apps include the Alarm app, the Navigation Applications, Historical Trend, the Map app, for example, and we're not going to use any of these today. And then in the net controls folder, you can see the net controls for the alarm plane, the trend plane, for example, and most importantly, the SQL grid. So if you expand that, you can see the symbol and then also you can see the control. Traditionally, the SQL data grid symbol, which is delivered as an industrial graphic, is used in an in-touch screen. However, in OMI, the process is a little bit more involved. So what we need to do next is we need to import the SQL grid as an orchestra application in our Galaxy and use it as an application in OMI screen. The next step is to locate where the SQL grid folder is saved. So in your local disk, program files, and then orchestra, framework, bin folder, and then it's this Invensys System Inc. SQL Data Grid User Control. So if you double click on this folder, you can see all of the DLL files associated to this control. And what we're going to do is we're going to just copy all of these files. And to make life easy, I'm going to go on the desktop and create a new folder and call this one SQL data grid underscore zero one. So it's easy for me to locate it later on. And I'm going to paste all of those DLL files in this folder. Now that we have all the DLL files associated to this control saved in a folder on our desktop so it's easy to access, just going to close the, that file explorer and go back to the system platform ID and click on Galaxy to import that as a orchestra application. So instead of going with the client control, I'm going to go with the orchestra application. So I'm going to click on app and then on my desktop, I should see the SQL data grid underscore zero one folder. And I'm just going to click on it once and then say OK. So now our My Galaxy is importing the Orchestra app. There'll be a few steps here, and as you can see, once it's imported, it immediately appeared here on my graphical toolbox as the SQL data grid underscore zero one. So the app is already imported. So now that we have the SQL data grid application imported in the our Galaxy, the next step would be to create an OMI application and embed this SQL data grid app into our OMI application. And in order to do that, I'm going to start by expanding my content folder and then creating a screen profile. So a new screen profile, just leave the name as it is, and then create a layout.
We'll call this one SQL layout. Double click on the layout to configure it. So I'm going to create another pane here. For example, we can use that later if we want to script something, script some control. And this is the pane where we're going to add our SQL data grid. So in order to do that, I need to click on toolbox. And as you can see here, it's popping up in the main folder. This is the SQL data grid. So this is the one that we need. If you hover over it, it would say SQL data grid user control. And all we need to do is just drag and drop that in the pane. And as you can see here, it already has some of the content of the control appearing even before you see it in preview mode or you um, deploy the application. So now I'll save and close this. And we will create a view app. In order to do that, I'm going to template toolbox. And in default templates, I'm going to expand view apps and right click on view app and create a new drive template. And I'll call this one SQL app. And double click on this view app to configure it. So the first thing is we need to choose the screen profile. We're happy with the screen profile that we've created. And then I'm going to choose the layout. So it's going to be the SQL layout that we've just created and then say finish. So now the um, SQL view app window pops up with the layout that you've chosen according to the screen profile that you've chosen also. And we can go to the preview mode. And this is before we configure or um, before we uh, play with the settings for the SQL app. But as you can see here, this is the screen, and these are some of the controls in the um, SQL data grid application. We need to configure the SQL data grid application first, and then we will see some results. So now at this point, we are ready to configure the properties of the SQL data grid app. And in order to do that, we're going to click on layout here and say, edit layout and in the layout itself if you click on the pane where the uh, SQL data grid application is being embedded and then click on properties the properties displayed here are related to the application they're related to the SQL data grid application so we'll start by configuring first of all let's go to the SQL database and choose a database and a table to display so for example, here, there's the runtime database and then inside of it, the tables. So for example, there is this tag table that we can check. Let's display it here first. There you go. So this is the database that we will be looking at. Now we're looking at it using the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And the next step would be we'll look at it using the SQL data grid um, visualization on OMI. So going back to our um, layout in the properties, the first thing to do here is to choose the authentication mode. So you either have Windows or SQL Server. I'm going to stay with Windows and then the configured database. So this is going to be a runtime. And the configured server. It's going to be on the local host. And then the SQL query is the um, table that we're interested in. So this is going to be DBO and then dot underscore tag. And this is all that we need to configure at this point or if this is the minimum configuration, let's say, that uh, we need to do at the beginning to actually retrieve some data from the SQL database. There are, there are more configuration and properties that we can check later. 
but the four configuration or the four properties that we've just configured are the minimum requirements. So again, it's the authentication mode, configured server, configured database, and then the SQL query. So at this point, I'm just going to say save and close. And going back to the uh, SQL app. So now we've edited the uh, layout. I'm just going to say preview. So first things first, let's test the connection. Connection is successful. And then we can retrieve. So if we click on retrieve here, this is the database or the text database retrieved uh, from SQL database. At this point, um, as you can see, um, this is the database that we have retrieved from on the runtime database tag table. You can choose to make this screen or this application read only or read write depending on who is using it and whether you would want to give them the um, ability to manipulate the database or not. Next step, I will change this database to another database that I want to manipulate and we will make the settings or the properties for the application as read write so we can do some data manipulation. So I'm first going to go back to the SQL application. I'm going to edit the layout one more time. So now um, in the properties, if you could just type in read here, it will search for the read only. I'm going to uncheck this to make it read write. This is the first thing. The second thing, I'm going to change the database because I don't want to touch this runtime database. So I'm going to just double check another database name here in my SQL server. And this one is probably going to be specs and the table is dbo.sheet1. All right, so going back to our application, I want to make this dbo sheet one and the configuration database as specs which is the name of my database i'll leave the configuration server or the configured server as localhost and i'll also leave the authentication mode the way it is now i'm going to hit um, save and close and i'm going to minimize this uh, sql server management studio Now going back to the SQL app, we can go to the preview mode to see the changes. So we'll test the connection first and connection succeeded and then we'll retrieve. So now we're retrieving the um, sheet one table from the specs database. And just to confirm, go to specs and then tables. And then this is the first table. This is the same database that we're looking at using the SQL data grid. So now in order to write into the database, we need to uh, close this preview and create an instance of this view app. It's created the SQL underscore app underscore zero zero one for us. And we need to deploy this application. Therefore, I have to deploy the entire platform in order to run it on the Aviva or my application manager. Now that the deployment is completed, we need to launch it. Uh, we need to launch the app at the Aviva All My Application Manager. As you can see here, these are the two apps that we have. These are the two deployed apps. So we're going to launch the SQL app. All right. So we're going to retrieve the data, and then we'll try and write 
um, to the data. So I would say there is a class for, for example, and then I'll just give some random numbers here. And click on right. Success means uh, it did write to the database. And in order to double check that, all we need to do is just to refresh the table in the database itself and see the uh, reflected changes. So we've added class four, we've inserted new row for data basically, uh, meaning we can write into the database. Uh, the other option would be read only as we saw earlier. So in case you don't wanna give the operators the ability to manipulate database, you can set it to read only. And in case you would like the users to have read write uh, privileges, they can also do that. And this is how to utilize the SQL data grid in OMI for system platform to connect to the SQL database. We saw together in this video um, how to import the SQL data grid control as an application into our galaxy. Then we went over the minimum configuration required by the SQL data grid app to retrieve data from SQL database and set custom properties that must be configured to authenticate users and connect to database. Thank you for watching.